Hey, hello, it's David, and um, someone asked me, uh, I'll put up the, um, so I've kind of started in the middle of nowhere. I'm David, I'm from Peripheral Games, and today is a tutorial on how to use drivers and custom properties in Blender, which is something not a lot of people know how to do, <coughs> as far as I know, and kind of a cool feature. Um, anyways, as I was saying, uh, someone asked me um, if I could do this tutorial, I'll put up their... Uh, YouTube name on the video now and um, they asked me in one of my older videos how to do these custom properties so if you uh, if you're in the blender um, community you may know of Sintel and how she had custom properties and also if you've been using blender for a while um, you will see down here is custom properties in the bottom corner and that's what we're going to be using so, um, let's just get this started. Um, let's start with um, basically um, drivers. Drivers are what's gonna, uh, what our custom properties are gonna control, and drivers can control basically any property in Blender, be it the rotation, location, um, the speed of this listener and the audio. It doesn't matter what. It, it pretty much anything you can put a driver on. See, you can put a driver on the diffuse intensity, anything you want. So, for the purposes of showing how this works, I'm going to put a driver on the scale of of our box here. So, if you go over the scale, and you'll see add drivers and add single driver. Add drivers will add drivers on X, Y, and Z. Add single driver will just put one on X, which we'll just do for now. And then what you want to do is you're going to close down this uh, thing here, and then I'm going to split this and get out the, the the graph editor, which is a fairly technical part of Blender, but nevertheless, anyways, press N now, and you'll get the properties in the the right here, and down here you want to swap this over to drivers, and immediately you will see the X scale drivers of the cube, which is the one that we put in here, the X scale. And we have a curve. <coughs> we have a curve, which isn't really a curve; it's just a straight line. And this here, and this is blah blah blah. blah all this very complicated. Um, I don't know fully how it works. I just know how to use it, and that's pretty much um, how it's going to work. So let's just make this bigger so you can see what's going on here. Uh, I've just made something go away. There we go. Okay. So up here is the drivers, and it says here. Um, uh, the type scripted expression average values all the one um, the ones that I've used at the moment are average value uh, that's what I've used for the majority of them and the the variables is what's gonna drive um, drive the scale so uh, there's a few here there's add there's already one added var um, and that's what we're gonna use you can add multiple variables but these other uh, types here like minimum value maximum value some values they will uh, do the thing so if you have multiple variables here and you put this on sum, it's going to add the two variables together and that's what you're going to use to drive it so we're just going to have one variable I'm going to leave the name as that and we can leave this on transform I'll show you another one of these in a minute but we're going to leave this on transform channel for a minute and we're going to change this type to the Y rotation in world space of the cube object so if I just uh, get this out of the way now, if I change the Y rotation, oh no wait, I've done this done this not fully right yet. Y rotation of the cube. Um, why is it not working? As you can see. Um, drivers are a little bit fiddly. Nevertheless, I just clicked update dependencies there. What I'm trying to get is this y value to change the change the scale, the x scale, but it's not working. Um, and it's not working because I'm not 100% sure why. Um, there we go. I don't know what happened there. It's still supposed to be on average value. 
as just Blender being a bit weird. I'm sorry if I'm wasting your time. But now, if I change the rotation, it's changing this the uh, the scale, the X scale. It looks kind of weird, but you see there if I if I change the rotation in Y, the X scale is changing like that, and that's pretty much how it works. I don't often use this for that uh, use though. I often use um, custom properties, which is what I'm going to show you next. So let's just delete this driver um, and set this back to zero and start again. Okay, let's get our cube. And you can add custom properties to the material, um, all sorts of other things. But the one that I've used most of the time is uh, just the one in objects. I'm not sure if this. Um, this works. I don't think it does. No. So I'm just going to delete that. Go into the object uh, properties, which is this little yellow cube, and custom properties down the bottom, and click add. And you will see there it comes up prop, and you click edit. I'm going to change this to Y scale. Uh, you can give it a tooltip. I'm just going to write jumble simulation there. And that's pretty much it. And now, as you can see, if you uh, we can go out of here now. If you go into the properties panel on the side of the 3D view here, you see our Y scale property, which we can change. But it doesn't do anything. That's what we're going to do next. So if you go up to, what do we say? It was going to be the Y scale. So if we go up to scale, and we right click on Y, and click add single driver. Uh, do do do. <coughs> and come up here click on it again change it to average value it's going to give us an error let's just leave it on scripted expression for a minute because it's going to give us an error so in the variable no let's leave it on average value see if that works uh, in the variable I'm going to change this to single property and the objects going to be cube and it's going to ask for a path and a lot of people get confused here but it's really simple all you got to do is go over to your your um, object properties over here to your your uh, Y scale and click um, copy data path on your on your Y scale on your Y scale property so copy data path and then just hover over the box and press control V and ta-da that's pretty much all you have to do um, so now if I change I don't know if you can see this. If I change my Y scale property down here, it's changing the scale from 0 to 1, which is kind of cool. Um, let's just minimize some of these. See what's going on. There we go. So if I move it, the, the scale changes. And if you come up here, there's some maths modifiers here. You can add a few modifiers, which are all very um, mathematical and everything. But the generator, if you change this Y equals 0 plus 1 X, uh, if we change this to 10, for example, that'll mean that the um, <coughs> property or the driver can go up to 10. So, or no, I, I said that wrong. Basically, what it does is it takes, if I put this at 10, it's going to make sure that the, the, the property changes the scale from 0 uh, to 10. So if I put in 1, in in here it's going to be equal to 10 up here it's multiplying it by 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 10 in fact uh, that's why point 1 is equaling 1 because it's multiplied by 10 if you want your uh, your y scale property to go up higher you can go down to your custom properties click edit click max and change it to 10 so that now um, no that's doesn't appear to have worked uh, okay there we go now this goes up to 10 and our multiplication generator, our multiplication modifier here is multiplying it by 10. So uh, going up to 10 like this is actually giving us 100. So change this back to 1. And then 1 equals 1. So there you go. So now it goes from 0 to 10 like that. Now. Uh, I use this a lot on rigs. Um, I'm just going to show you a rig that I made a, a while back and how it's working in this rig. Uh, let me just get this. 
Yeah, select this. X-ray. Okay. So, in my rig, on the on the spine bone here, which is the selected one, I've got these properties called head follow location, head follow rotation, and move hands. And these, um, if you if you look at the hands there, now I change this move hands. What that's basically changing is you see the tooltip. Do the hands move with the spine? So um, one equals yes. So if I move the spine, the hands are moving with it. But if I change this to zero and I move the spine, the hands don't move. They stay in the same place. And the way that's working is on the hands, I've got a child of constraint, which is um, making the making the hands a child of the spine. And this influence the influence of the um, of the constraint is controlled by a driver and let's get this to do, do, do get the F curve the drivers editor here uh, press N and there you go so then in my path I have put the custom property uh, which is on my spine so I've just gone over here clicked copy data path and pasted it in into here so I got object da -da, average value and that means whenever I change this property the influence of that um, controller boom changes another common use for this I'm just gonna open up a new blender file here uh, I don't know how much time I'm using up here I'm just gonna say this quickly because I'm running out of time another common use for this is to have um, is to use it on shape keys so I'm just gonna add another quick shape key here and if we edit this I'm just gonna move this up like that and you see if I change uh, the shape key this is the value of the shape key in the corner here if I put a driver on this I can then control the shape key from a property and that's what was used in Sintel for controlling your face so they had a whole lot of properties on the side here and they were all connected to drivers controlling shape keys but anyways I uh, hope you enjoyed the video if you did enjoy the video please comment and tell me so uh, and uh, like and subscribe and if this was useful to you at all please tell me I would be gladly um, like to know how you use the information and was I helpful at all so bye, bye for now